Welcome to Books and Booze, a bookish and wine and juice podcast from two book lovers who have never met. That is the power of the internet. It is wet and rainy here in Sydney. We are getting some much needed downpour. I am so excited. It's going to blow this way tomorrow and we're having thunderstorms and I just want to stay in all weekend and relax. Yeah, that would be nice, wouldn't it? With books and listening to the pitter-patter of raindrops and growling of the thunder. <laughs> So what do we have today? Today is basically an entire episode based on boozy banter, which I love. <laughs> um, we are doing like some questions to get to know us better as the host of this podcast, that our listeners take the time to download and listen to out of their busy days, and we really appreciate it. And we had some of you ask us some questions, and we also got some off the internet. Kiara will tell you where we got the questions from if you're interested. So, yeah, like some people had asked to learn a bit more about Jade and I, so I thought these were good questions to take you down that that journey with us we are very flattered that people want to know more about us outside yes. of our book space <laughs> before we start are you drinking anything today um tonight i have poured myself a glass of i took a photo of the label because the bottle is downstairs yes. so it is a um australian wine tambourine <laughs> is the name of the winery and it's Tamerlane Organic Wines and it's a 2017 Reserve Riesling. Oh, hmm. is it good? It is nice. Awesome. Well, I am just, I'm going to just pour mine. Can you hear it? Glug, 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 glug. Oh, that's a nice glass, Jade. There we go. <laughs> I just finished the bottle. Um, not that I drank it all today, but I just finished the bottle. And it is called Pablo and Pedro, and I thought it was really fitting because we are, uh, you know, two peas in a pod. Uh, <laughs> we are the, the co-hosts, and there's this, like, label's really cool. It's, like, these two dudes, like, rowing. <laughs> it's cute. Really cute. I like it. We'll take a photo and put it up on the page. Yeah, it's a Temperanello, and um, it's actually a Spanish wine, but it's from Australia. And it is um, about Pablo and Pedro, who are both great artists, like we are great podcasters, mm -hmm. but that's where their similarities end. And I just, so some of this is obviously not true, but I thought that it was still kind of cool because like we've got a lot of differences as well. So um, we both love thrillers and stuff, but we have a lot of things that make us very unique. Um, like so you watch wanted, a lot of trashy TV and I never touch it. I did not just finish watching The Bachelor Australia <laughs> with, um, what's his name, Honey Badger. I did not. <laughs> I, I said to Kiara before we started this episode, I just need eight minutes. I was finishing The Bachelor. I thought that was a really exact <laughs> time because usually you're like, I need to go to the toilet or something like that. You need to like do a quick wee. And I was like, that's a really long wee. That's a very specific amount of time. Yep, eight minutes. It's uh, it's what was left of my Bachelor episode. <laughs> well, there you go. There's our differences, because I have never watched an episode of The Bachelor or The Bachelorette. Mm -hmm. Okay, you need to start, because it's just so funny, and I love it. But it also makes me feel like shit, because of those spells are perfect, and I am not. <laughs> but but anyways, they're on a show looking for love, and you've got love. I do have love, but my love needs to stop feeding me starchy food so I can get my six pack back. <laughs> anyway, so this wine is about these two dudes, Pablo and Pedro. And Pablo's short, Pedro's tall, Pablo is loud, Pedro is restrained. Pablo's style is vibrant and provocative, where Pedro's style is elegant and dignified. So mm -hmm. I, in this situation, I think I'm Pablo and you're Pedro. <laughs> You know, like, I went to this Murderino meetup last night, and I was telling these girls about our podcast, and one said, oh, Jade, you're like the Georgia of your podcast, because Georgia is the one that gets a bit tipsy. And I'm stuff. sure she swears. Yes, and that's me, and I'm like, I don't know if this is a good or a bad thing. So you're the I Karen. I think they're both good, so I'm the Karen. <laughs> I'll take that. Have you ever listened to any of Karen um, Karen's comedy music? No, no. It's really funny. You should give that a listen. For anyone who doesn't know what we're talking about, we're talking about the podcast My Favourite Murder, which is something that Jade and I bonded about in the beginning, and there's two hosts. So <laughs> Jade is yes. the Georgia and I'm the Karen. 
Although I've heard a lot of people lately say that they're starting to tune out of George's stories on on My Favorite Murder, and I don't understand why, because I still love them. I think some people get frustrated because she um, goes, a lot of da 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 like, oh yeah, she always does that. But and, and it's, I know sometimes she's not you. as um prepared. Yes. So I am very much like her, but hopefully people will stick with me and want me around. <laughs> <laughs> they don't tune you out. No one will tune you out. <laughs> well, anyway, so yes. Um, just to finish with my my little bottle of wine, Pablo and Pedro Temperanello. Uh, it's a Spanish wine, and it pairs really well with jamón, which is an amazing, like, meat in it's like Spain. Prosecco. Yeah, um, chorizo and olives and stuff like that. And I just literally, I bought, like, this little jar of olives from Coles, like the cheap one, and then I just chopped up my own garlic and chili, and I put it in there, and I left it in there for a week. And today I opened it up, and it tastes divine. And it's so much cheaper. the wine? Yeah. So I am enjoying it. Anyway, like let's get on with it. But this okay. is all about boozy banter, so whatever. Just listen to us and have fun. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I will take the first question. Given right. the choice of anyone in the world, with whom would you want as a dinner guest? Can I answer first? Yep. You. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> We've never met. And no. we, we have this podcast and our friendship's been growing every week. Mark is like, I can just see how much you guys are bonding. So, yes, if I could have dinner with anyone in the world, it would be you. Oh, that's cute. <laughs> I'm going to stick with that answer then. We don't need another answer. No, no. Do, do, do which one you were going to choose. Well, the only thing that I was um, thinking of was, I mean, she's passed away now, but I was thinking Audrey Hepburn. Oh yeah, she's because I she's amazing. She's like a and gorgeous she's actress, and she was a philanthropist, and she's funny, and she lived through so much. And I just think she'd be a really interesting person to have dinner with. She she passed away of pancreatic cancer, did she not? I be, uh, I I think it was bowel cancer. Oh, okay, I was something two, like that. Yeah, and very young as well. Yeah, she was fairly young, apparently, um, because she used to do a lot of work with UNICEF. She was over um, in Africa, I believe, um, and she was having symptoms and pain and stuff like that, but she didn't want to see a doctor. And then by the time she got home and saw a doctor, it was too late. Oh. So, yeah. Terrible. Mm -hmm. Okay, so yours is Audrey Hepburn. I absolutely love that movie Breakfast at Tiffany's. Yeah, I adore that's it. my favourite. I always yeah. watch that when I'm feeling a bit like blue or something like that, and I just want to watch like a – it's a good movie. Yes. On the note of Tiffany's, can I just say that I walked into Tiffany's jewellery store the other day and decided I wanted to try on some engagement rings <laughs> because, you know, I'm obsessed. Not that I'm getting engaged anytime soon, but – um, I tried this beautiful ring on in the style that I want, which is like the teardrop or pear mm -hmm. shape, whatever you want to call it. Mm -hmm. Guess how much it was. Did I tell you? I think you told me, and I remember saying, no, <laughs> that's far too much money. Yeah, I mean, it's the most drop-dead gorgeous, stunning thing you've ever seen, but seventeen and a half thousand dollars in in South Africa, you you could like fucking like buy a good car. For that amount of money. Yeah. Well, here like, you could buy a car for that amount of money. Yeah. I mean, oh, it's just ridiculous. Far too much money for a ring. No. No. You wouldn't I mean, feel comfortable it wearing stuff. it. Yeah. Like, I'd be too freaking scared to leave my house. I'd have yeah. to put, like, a plastic one on when I go out and then just <laughs> keep it to myself. And That's then what's fun. the point of the ring? Exactly. Anyway, <laughs> so question two is... Would you like to be famous, and in what way, if so? So I'm going to go with no, okay. because I don't think I could handle not having privacy, especially with two children. Like maybe yeah. before I had kids, it would be a different story, but now I wouldn't um, want that sort of life for my kids. Yeah. So like oh, – I get that. 
Yeah. So once upon a time, like in high school, I did like theater and all that sort of stuff. And I loved that. And like, you know, your pipe dreams are always like, oh, I want to be a famous actress or whatever. Now, no yeah. way. I'm very happy with, with being a semi recognizable podcaster sometimes <laughs> where people write us it lovely comments. feel good. Yes. <laughs> well, um, I think my answer for this is a bit different because I would like to be famous, but not in like the celebrity gossip kind of way. Like I just, I, I want people to know me as someone like if, if they need a book recommendation uh-huh. anywhere in the world and they're just like, God, like, yes, Jade will be able to give me a great recommendation. Like That's a good one. And everyone in the world knows that I am like reliable for that. Like I'd love that. And, you know, I think a part of me as well, like I, I'd love to be a best selling author. So mm-hmm. it's not, it's famous, but it's different because it's more kind of like behind the scenes rather yeah. than out on camera. Like podcasting is great because we see each other on our Skype calls, but no one else sees us. So, I mean, right now I look like death. I fell asleep on the couch again at work today. <laughs> this time I didn't scream out, so it was okay. But yeah, I look like death. <laughs> <laughs> Lovely. Um, before making a telephone call, do you ever rehearse what you're going to say and why? Never. Not I, me either. No. I, one thing about me that you might not know is I absolutely hate telephones. I hate them. I get anxious when I have to speak to someone on the phone. Yeah. Like, it took me ages to start even phoning Mark, my partner. Um, yeah. Um, so I love it. Like his his mother and father, they're so sweet to me because they always want to talk and like they're always like, oh, I put Jade on. I want to say hello, and I love it that they care. But like I find phones so confronting, and I'm just like, ah! <laughs> I want to have a phone call. <laughs> no, I don't re- rehearse phone calls either. Yeah, I don't see the point. Like, no, take me as I am. I'll go away. <laughs> Okay, uh, question number four, let me just unlock my phone, is what would you constitute a perfect day for you? Um, I think anything, so anything spent with my family. So, like, last weekend we had a long weekend in Sydney. Was it a long weekend in Brisbane? Yep. Yeah. Well, uh, yeah, last weekend, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Because um, Yeah, because it's not for everyone. Yeah. Yeah. Um, um, we just kind of relaxed around the house one day and we watched a movie and that sort of stuff. And I thought that was really nice. So anything like that I spend with my boys. Mm. Okay. I have a hard time choosing what would be my, my perfect day because every day it's different for me. Like, yeah. It depends what mood I'm in. Like, do I want to be out or do I want to be indoors? Like, for instance, this weekend I said to Mark, all I want to do is just stay in, listen to the rain, read my book while you play video games and I'll, I'm happy as. But other times I would love it. Like if we went out for like bike rides in the park and the botanical gardens and sat down and listened to podcasts and books and read books and then had a glass of wine and, you know, like I, it's hard to say as long as there's food and there's laughter and a really good sleep, I think I'd be stoked. (laughs) (laughs) Sleep is nice. Yes. Sleep is good. One thing I think both of us are lacking. <laughs> yeah, I think we are at the moment. <laughs> uh, when did you last sing to yourself, to someone else? So I sing to myself all the time, but uh, Mark and I sing to each other and to ourselves every morning when we're getting up and making coffee and stuff. So we're just, you know, we're big three fours and we always sing. What about you? Yeah. I sing all the time too, all the time. And I don't care if I have a horrible voice, I will just sing. Um, do, you, do you sing lullabies to your kids? I do sometimes, yeah. Or I will sing like whatever's on the radio. Okay. <laughs> so like whatever is in my head, it might not necessarily be a radio like song. But um, every night to Alex, we sing um, the Tales of Friendship song, which is um, there's a TV program and it's um, this – um, he's a British comedian and he reads um, Winnie the Pooh stories and at the end there's a song and we'd always like had that on um, during night for Alex and then now like we just sing it to him every night. Okay. Yeah. 
Uh, but other than that, I sing at work all the time. My poor co-workers. <laughs> <laughs> Well, lately I've been singing. Um, I don't, I can't remember who the the artist is right now. But so Mark and I, for the longest time, have been like, we need a song. All of our friends have songs for their relationship, but we don't have one. So we went to Toowoomba the other day for the Flower Festival, and um, in the car, we both just loved the lyrics of um, "Home is Whenever I'm with You." Um, Edward Sharp. Yes, that's it. So every bloody day. I am just, but like in a silly voice, I'm just like, home is wherever I'm with you. <laughs> and I'm just like loving it. And Mark's just laughing at me. Let me go home. <laughs> yes, I promise I'm not that drunk yet. <laughs> That's just what I do. Mark will probably be like, oh, I know that voice. <laughs> if you were able to live to the age of 90 and retain either the mind or body of a 30 year old for the last 60 years of your life which would you choose so you're you're you you live until 90 and you get the choice between the mind or body of a 30 year old i would pick mind because i have seen what uh dementia and stuff like that can do to a person and it's just so tragic. So I would, I, I would definitely go with the mind. I, I think I would need you. that. Yeah, mm-hmm. I agree with you completely. So this is the question where I was like, okay, no, I'm just gonna start doing this off the top of my head because, like, I at the time when I read this, I was like, wait, this looks like a mathematical riddle. <laughs> <laughs> like now. <laughs> If Jane has X amount of apples and Kiara has X the train. amount of bananas, how long before they meet in the middle at Byron? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So, yes, but, yeah, we both agree on mind. Yeah. We both have X amount of apples. <laughs> or we have none. But we keep our apples. We've lost our we bananas. Have- we both have like non amount of marbles. That's that's we've both lost our marbles. That's why we found each other. <laughs> Name three things you and your partner appear to have in common. You go first. I would say Mitch and I have uh in common loyalty. We have uh kindness, although sometimes he'd say I'm not very kind, but I think I'm kind. <laughs> Kindness, loyalty, and humour. Okay. Oh, that's lovely. I think Mark and I have goofiness. It's one thing my friends always say is that we, we're both just such goofy people and they're very happy we found each other because no one else can actually get me besides Mark. Um, <laughs> um, <laughs> we are both very uh we've got really big hearts both of us like yep. we've got a lot of love to give and we do so i know mark he, he adores all of his friends and his family is you know second to none um they're amazing so he's got the biggest heart and then um the last one is that we are both excruciatingly stubborn <laughs> yeah like and that that really really fucks us up because when we argue neither of us are wrong and we both just have to like realize step down together and move on and (laughs) it it doesn't go well but yes very stubborn both of us are you and your partner stubborn look yeah i'm very stubborn mitch was (laughs) very stubborn i think he's less stubborn than me yeah i'm a taurus i'm a taurus i'm italian and i'm serbian (laughs) yeah I'm really stubborn. Mitch, well done. <laughs> he's, he's not as stubborn. He is more likely to leave an argument. I, I would be more than happy to go in the other room and just sulk, but he doesn't like to do that, so yeah. he usually tries to resolve it. Yeah, I'm the same. I could very easily just go flop on the bed and, like, give him the cold shoulder for the night. <laughs> it doesn't go well. <laughs> Till I get hungry. Yeah, I mean, like, Feed me, Seymour. <laughs> this is why all the arguments happen. I need food. <laughs> yeah, I'm hangry. <laughs> all right. Our next question is, for what in your life do you feel most grateful? Do you want to go first? <clears throat> um, God. 
massage. I feel most grateful. I would have to say, um, I, I love Mark to bits, but I'd have to say, you know, when my parents were healthy um, and we had a bit of wealth behind us, we don't have it anymore, but um, they allowed me to do things that I could never have achieved without them, like my travels and when I wanted to, you know, do things and study things to get me to go to Spain and to go here and go there and um, uh, eventually move to Cape Town, which is, you know, where I met Mark and wound up in Australia, it all kind of leads on to that. So I'd have to say that the fact that my parents gave me the opportunity to live a life where one day I would be able to find my way to Australia to the love of my life, I'm grateful for that. Very nice. For me, for me, of course, it's my family and the opportunity to be able to be a mother and the chance to be able to have children because I know a lot of people don't get that chance I think that I'm very grateful for that and I'm also really grateful for this podcast and the people that listen to the podcast and like the opportunity to meet you I think it's all been wonderful I'm very lucky uh yes I have to say you are the best (laughs) co-host I adore you and could not be happier it all worked out (laughs) you know what I was seeing is this is just like a like a sidebar episode and we can go off topic do you know what I was thinking about today when I I was driving I was thinking about so when Jane and I first you know had the idea and we were going through the motions and we were deciding everything and I Jade said before we put any like real money into the podcast we'll just see how it goes and I said to her how many episodes do you think would be us giving it a go because like I wanted to be on the same page obviously and you said I think three. Oh, did I? I think so and you oh, were like and if, not very you said you said three and if we get like you know 50 downloads or something like that a month then that's considered oh, I wasn't good. very ambitious was I? I don't even remember this. <laughs> <laughs> so you said like that would be good. And I was thinking, gosh, we're sitting here, we're about to, I think it's like a 12th episode we're recording. We're almost on um, 1,600 downloads. And it's just been a whirlwind. Yeah. (laughs) It's funny how, like, yeah. (laughs) Yeah, I'm just, I'm so grateful for everyone. And I'm just wondering, should we go off track for a second and shout a special listener out with some of her questions and what we're going to do for her yes so there is a lovely listener called novel thrills and chills Uh, and she is so supportive and so lovely and she always asks us questions and she always comments and she always likes our photos and we wanted to Say thank you. So if you DM us our um, your address or send it to our email, um, yes. we will send you uh, one of our mugs from Jade and I to say thank yeah. you. Because we really appreciate it. We love when listeners take the time to really comment and interact with us. It means the world to us. Yeah. We're always, like, I see in the the messages that Jade's chatting to people. She'll see that I chat to people. It's 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 so much fun. Yeah. It <laughs> it's really so much is. fun to, to meet new people and become friends with people who are like-minded and love books like that. And, yeah. So, novel thrills yeah. and chills. Congratulations. You're getting a, You're getting a hug. <laughs> and if any other wonderful listener... Um, wants to get a mug then either show us some freaking love <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> or <laughs> or they are uh for sale for twelve dollars plus shipping so and it's international so wherever you want to go we will package it really securely and nicely and might even include a little special note from us books and um, booze will come to you worldwide yes. and then all you have to do is take photographs of it wherever you are, because we love seeing our merchandise around the world. Did you know I've got this this friend called um, Tara? Um, she's got this – she's uh, one of the best Irish travel bloggers in uh, in the world. Um, 
I've known her for a few years, and I sent her one of our shirts. Mm -hmm. She is now currently in America, and she's going to photograph the shirt for us. And she's going to, yeah, she's going to give us a little shout out. And she's got, like, over, uh, close to, like, 50,000 followers. That's so sweet. But her photographs are amazing, and her travel page and blog is incredible. So um, she's called Where is Tara, and she is great so check her out if you love travel anyway um so what was um novel thrills and chills questions so she had two <clears throat> one was um one was um what is your favorite halloween tradition now <laughs> i don't know so i have lived in america so i can answer this one um but i know that you i don't know if in south africa they celebrate halloween uh they do um we actually in south africa i was from a tiny town and um the place that everyone went to go and trick-or-treat got uh banned because everyone started egging houses and toilet papering trees and stuff so there's yeah, always someone who has to ruin the fun yeah but you know i I said to Mark the other day we were in, where was it, like Big W or something, I, I saw um, Halloween outfits and I was like, look at that, I'm going to dress up this Halloween, I'm going to go knock on doors and if they don't want to give me candy, then I'm going to bloody act their house anyway. <laughs> <laughs> it was you, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Damn it, I just saw myself. <laughs> so is that is that your favourite Halloween tradition, egging people's houses? <laughs> We've spoken about egging people's houses on this podcast before. <laughs> As you can see, uh, I'm not like a pyromaniac. I'm like an agromaniac. <laughs> Which would say I'm an agromaniac. Do you know what agro means? Like you're angry? Yeah, angry. It's yes. Austra- I think it's Australian slang. No, I think agro, like aggressive. Agro. Okay. Yeah. yeah I, know. I know that. And I'm not Australian. Okay. <laughs> Um, my favorite Halloween tradition. Um, so it's something that, like I said, not a lot of Australians do celebrate it. It is getting bigger here. I really like it. I love it. So I've started buying like little bits and pieces to decorate the house. I just like, I don't know. I just like the whole feel of it. I want to go back to America and have Halloween again with my kids. Yeah. Yeah. I've, I've only done pumpkin carving once. Yeah. And it's it, hard. Yeah. So it bloody is, hard. It is one of the funnest things mm. I have ever done, and I loved it. Even though my pumpkin ended up looking like an absolute spaz, like all my friends' pumpkins look great and scary, and mine looked like a freak. But that's fine. Like you know, I'm different. <laughs> I just had a I just had a brainstorm. He had a body. I had a brainstorm. What are we doing? We have a, you could get a pumpkin and I could get a pumpkin and we could carve said pumpkins and we could do a poll on Instagram. To see who <laughs> <We> wins. <laughs> they should also guess who did which one because now I've given myself away. <laughs> I love this. Okay, let's do this. So yeah. if you see a a poll on Instagram of two very strange looking pumpkin carvings. <laughs> vote, vote for the freakiest looking one because that'll be mine. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. So, and then um, her other question was who is your hero and why? I saw that one actually and I have been battling to answer it. I, I don't have a hero. On yeah. I don't. Um, I I am my own hero. I've battled through a lot of shit in my life and a lot of, like, um, you know, very close to suicide and depression and anxiety. But I am somehow still a happy, smiley person. And to this, like, right now, I feel so happy, and I conquered that myself. So I'm my own hero. Well, let's just say that then. Anyone who has battled mental health is a hero of ours because it's yeah. tough. It's tough. It's very hard. 
Yeah, like it really is extremely hard. And if you have gotten through it, then give yourself a bloody pat on the back. And if you drink, then have a glass of wine because you deserve it. <laughs> Remember that there's always someone that you could probably reach out and talk to. And if you don't know who that person might be, that person could be us. Yes, we are always, always here for you if you need someone to vent to or just, you know, if you're feeling lost and you don't know where to go. We aren't professionals by any means, but we are here for you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. So the next question, getting back onto the lighter side of things, is um, if you could change one thing about the way you were raised, what would it be? <clears throat> I don't think I would change anything. I knew you'd say that. I it's every single thing that has every place I've lived, every thing I've experienced has led me to where I am today, and I'm very happy where I am today. So yeah. I wouldn't change anything. Okay, well that's right. that's lovely. <sighs> um, <laughs> um, you know I I love my parents obviously, um, but I I did have a tough upbringing um it was fueled by alcoholism and aggression and a lot of nasty stuff um a lot of violence um and it did it i think it's something that conjured a lot of my anxiety and depression um and just my my fear in people um it, it grew from that so if i could change something it would just be a healthier childhood where there wasn't as much drinking that fueled everything else that comes with it mm. yeah yeah that's what I would change <laughs> but like you know to this day like I I love my parents I always will um they've made me who I am so <sighs> love you mum and dad <laughs> do they listen I have no idea um <laughs> if they do they don't tell me um yeah they're not your family's amazing. They're like sending bloody donations to our Patreon <laughs> page and like talking to us and sending photographs of them. I'm like, this is amazing. Like <laughs> my family haven't done anything like that. Like they do things in other ways. They are lovely. My dad and I speak all the time, but I just don't think he cares about what I do on the internet. <laughs> Yeah, he's just like, whatever. <laughs> he doesn't understand. He's from a much older age, I think. Yeah. He's an old, grumpy man. Anyway, next question. If you could wake up tomorrow having gained any one quality or ability, what would it be? I wish wholeheartedly that I could just become who I was before I met my ex again. So someone that just loved and trusted the way that I did before because he ruined that. Yeah. So I wish, I just wish from the bottom of my heart that I could just give Mark that trust that I used to have in all my ex-boyfriends because he deserves it because he's amazing. But it's because of my ex that I've become so scared. And yeah. he doesn't deserve that. So, yeah, mm -hmm. if I could do anything, it would be to be able to trust Mark because he is amazing. And I know he'd never hurt me, but I've still got that lingering, like, what if feeling in my mind, which is my fault, not his. <laughs> what about you? Uh, ch -ch -ch -ch. One quality, patience. I wish I was a little more patient. Okay. <laughs> I would never admit that. <laughs> oh, good on you. Uh, what What okay. is it you are most unpatient about? Uh, I can be like, like a bit of a stress head. That's so I like funny. to be very organized and I like to be out of the house on time and I like to get places when it's time to get places and I like it. and I know that's not realistic but that's just me that's who I am like I don't like to be running late it makes me stressed it makes me anxious and I'm not I, I think you know me well enough to know that I'm not a yeah. hugely anxious person no. being late stresses me out 
So when and I so said when someone's to you, dawdling through the house, <laughs> it drives me crazy. So when no. I said to you, I need eight minutes, did no. that freak you out? <laughs> no, 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 because that's well, like I said, I said to you seven ish. Yeah. Okay. So ish is ish is not like a. It's not oh, like 7 p.m. Jade be ready to talk on the podcast. <laughs> Well, but, I could I could have done it later, but you know it was the rose ceremony, and Honey Badger was just about to choose who he was gonna like kick out of the mansion. And I was like, oh my god, if I have to like record this episode without knowing that, I'm going to be like, <laughs> who's he gotten rid of? Even though I kind of know. But. All I heard right then was wah, 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 wah. <laughs> You are a see you next Tuesday. <laughs> Like Charlie Brown when the teachers and they couldn't understand the teachers or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> I was just like, honey, honey badger, rose ceremony, what the frick is on the show about? It sounds like fiction. It is fiction. It's all scripted. It is not. Stop it. <laughs> I do not like what you're saying right now. I'm going to the next question so that we don't, like, I don't fire you. <laughs> You fire me for being an absolute twit. <laughs> Next week, okay. Books and Booze brought to you by two new co-hosts. Yeah, we're both going to have to give up our, our halves and we're like, give it to someone else because yeah. we just don't like each other anymore. <laughs> okay, if a crystal ball could tell the truth about yourself, your life, the future, or anything, what would you want to know? How funny would this be if it was like I had to answer for you and you had to answer for me? And you'd be like, Jade, you need to know that you need to stop watching shitty TV. <laughs> <laughs> the honey badger picks. Uh, Kim, I don't know. <laughs> Brandon! <laughs> Christopher wants you to know that this show is scripted. <laughs> I don't like you anymore. <laughs> Guys, if you're listening, there is a position open in Booksby's Pond for a co-host. <laughs> I kid, I kid. You can watch whatever you want. <laughs> uh, you love me deep down. Um, <clears throat> I think I would want to know if I'm going to have any more kids. Mm-hmm. And if <laughs> what that journey looks like, because obviously, like I have mentioned before, that I have had a, a miscarriage baby, miscarriage baby. <laughs> so I'd like to know if we're continuing on that trend, which I, of course, don't want, or if yeah. it's going to be smooth sailing. I would love to know that, but I'm never going to know that going into it. So, Yeah. I think that's a, a good answer. Um, mine, funnily enough, is also babies. I, I'd love Very to crazy. how many babies I have. So when I went to Bali a few years ago, they told me um, I went to Wyan from Eat, Pray, Love mm-hmm. by Elizabeth Gilbert, like the actual Wyan that mm-hmm. told her fortune and helped her out and Elizabeth gave her heaps of money and whatever and got her a house. Um I went to her and she was telling me a whole bunch of stuff about my life and it was crazy because like she was saying stuff about when I was in my mother's stomach and when I went to my mum and I was like did this happen my mother started crying and she was like how do you know this and I was like well this chicken barley told me and apparently like it was incredibly truthful and like so the second I met Wyan um, I shook hands with her, and at that stage, I'd just gotten a lump in my boob, and I still have it today. Um, it's incredibly sore, but it's not, it's not cancerous. I've had it checked out. But um, I shook her hand, and the first thing she did when she looked at me, I didn't even give her my name, my number, nothing. There was no way she could have researched me before. She, like, shook my hand, and she was like, you've got a pain in your left breast. And I was like, what the fuck? I... <laughs> Um, So it really spooked me out. And she said I was going to be married twice and have two children. But I am hoping she got it wrong because I was engaged and obviously my fiancé disappeared and all that jazz. Um, 
and now hopefully one day I will I will marry Mark Sheila and have his beautiful babies <laughs> and that's that's all I want and I'd love I'd love someone to confirm that for me because it's all I want in life hmm. nice yes okay next question do you believe in like prophecies like like that like someone going <coughs> oh yeah you're gonna have this and like someone that's a proper palm reader or something I'm not sure. So I've like I've been to a few, and some have been completely off the mark, and some have been quite on the mark. Um, I did go to one who kind of reads um, birth charts, so they chart your stars from when you're born, and she was quite accurate. But hers was more like <coughs> qualities and stuff like that that you have, and she was good. Which- I guess if you can read people, that would be such a waste of money, like, if you know what I mean. Like, mm. she, if she can read you well, she could just be like, oh, yeah, you're like this and this, like, just from looking at you, I've never met you, but you just seem like such a yeah. kind-hearted, yeah. open, you carry, loving You carry person. a stress yeah. on your shoulders, you're, like, very open, and people, yeah, 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 which I'm sure... Yeah. 90% of psychics would be that. Yes, exactly. Good, um, My, good at reading people. Yeah. Anyway, so the next question. Oh, it's actually your turn to ask. Is there something you've dreamed of doing for a long time? Why haven't you done it? What's your answer? I don't think so. I'm I, like I think that I'm just doing everything that I want to do at this point in time. So there's no there's no country you dream of going to. Yeah, or... like I, yeah, I, there is. Like travel's always there, and that's always something yeah. that I want to do more of. And at the moment but you can't because you've got no boys. Yeah, it's not re- like um, realistic. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So when they're older, like we definitely will probably do more traveling. But no, right now I think that I'm chasing all my dreams. Okay, that's awesome. Yeah, I th- I like to think the same. Like I'm chasing all my dreams with this handsome Aussie that's just walked in. <laughs> um, but one thing I have to say that I want to do so much. I mean, this also changes every day. But right now, the one thing that sticks out is hot air ballooning. Oh yeah. I I want to go in a hot air balloon so bad, but in South Africa, it was too expensive. You have to do it on the Gold Coast, please. Oh, apparently we're doing it on the Gold Coast. That would be oh, nice. I was going to say Hunter Valley is meant to be very good for that too, and that's winery country. Oh. Well, let's see. Apparently we're doing it on the Gold Coast, and I adore like the idea of hot air ballooning with some like bubbles or mm. something like at sunrise or at sunset. Yeah. That just makes me giddy with excitement. So what? No, I just not. <laughs> Luckily he didn't see that. <laughs> and that makes for awful podcasting, but for anyone who would like to know what I did, I pointed to a ring finger. That's a good spot to propose to someone. I have headphones on, so he can't hear that. Um, I have decided to... <laughs> Hi, Mark, when you listen. <laughs> <laughs> I stopped getting my hopes up. Um, he knows it. That's a better way to be anyway. Be surprised. Mark, go get yourself a beer. Uh. <laughs> He's grunting at me. Okay, so the next question is... Uh, uh, um. Oh, God, I sound like Georgia. <laughs> what is the greatest accomplishment of your life? I know what you're going to say here, so say it. My children. Woo! You are always right. My children. They are beautiful. They are funny. They are, like, Alex is so kind. He's older, so, like, Benny just turned one. But, like, Alex is so kind, and I always get feedback from school if, like, there's a little kid that's hurt himself. Like, he's always the first one there making sure that they're okay. And I think that that is a big accomplishment, that we've taught him to be a kind person. Yeah. But they are. they're, They're good children. 
you told me um, a little while ago that you were really sick and you were like, oh, please go get me a bucket. And he, <laughs> he ran and he got you his little bucket for yeah. his toys. I said to him, because um, we have children, so we got gastro, which is disgusting. And I was like, oh, can you go get daddy to get me a bucket? I'm going to be sick. And Alex, like, ran into his room and he got his little Avengers bucket. And he was like, mommy, mommy, here's my Avengers bucket. It was very sweet. They're very good boys. They, like, and I see all your little videos of them and stuff, and they just seem like angels. <laughs> so, oh, like, you, you did something on your personal one that's obviously private, but um, you would – you posted something about them sleeping and they just looked so angelic. And I was like, oh, so They always look boys. angelic when they're sleeping. <laughs> yeah. I mean, they have their moments, like any kids, but I think that 95% of the time they're angelic. <laughs> yeah, the funny thing is that they're pretty much my, my nephew's ages as well. Yeah, like, that you mentioned that, I think, when we first well. talked. Yeah, so it's it's really sweet to see because I see your freaking children more than I see my nephews on <laughs> on social media. But yes, you meet honorary um, Auntie Jade. <laughs> yes, I haven't met them, but I have pronounced myself Auntie Jade. <laughs> um, the greatest accomplishment of my life so far, because I don't have things like children to um, <laughs> do that, and I don't know if animals are justifiable enough uh mine's probably writing my novels yep i've i've written a few novels and i'm pretty damn proud of it uh yeah. they're not published but um i was actually gonna ask you like considering this is just a chatty episode what would you think about me on one episode if like maybe we have a bit of a hiatus for a week or so um reading like i'll read the first chapter of my latest book out as like an episode yeah go for it yeah and just yeah. see what people think yeah so i mean it, it's a it's a pretty it's the right dark, community for it <laughs> it's a it's a really dark gritty thriller with it's quite gory um especially the, the prologue and chapter one so mm -hmm. Um, and very psychological too so i'm thinking that might be quite fun um Yes, I, I hope that we hear back from you guys and hear that you're excited about that. <laughs> anyway, uh, next question is, what do you value the most in friendship, Kiara? Loyalty. Yep, I don't think you can beat that. No. I'm a very loyal friend. Like, I'm fiercely loyal. I'm, like, as much of a mama bear to my friends, I think, that I am to my children and like my family so if you're my friend you're my family that's the oh, way i see it so are you family of course podcasting family we have nice podcasting family don't we yes. like so many like of our friend podcasters are all beautiful people yeah definitely yeah no i i can't um say anything else about that like that's my answer too yeah mm. I think loyalty is the most important foundation of any relationship. Yeah, definitely. What is your most treasured memory? <sighs> I, <laughs> I honestly, I can't think of a, a memory that sticks out to me as, like, the most treasured. Yeah. Like, every memory I've got with Mark now, like, that's treasured, all the good ones, the ones yeah. that we're not, like biting each other's throats off. <laughs> Which um, everyone does. <laughs> yes. So that they're great. Mm -hmm. um, oh, actually, I can mention one. So I went through a, a pretty hard time in Spain, and my brother and I were never really close. Um, but the one day I decided to leave Spain, and I I WhatsApped my brother. Like, it's a app on your phone to chat to people for free. Um, I was talking to my brother and I was asking him for help and uh, he he was so helpful and he cared so much about me in that moment and he he got me out of there safe like even though he was far away and he might 
not think that he did that much, but yeah, I think that moment where I really needed to be speaking to him, like that moment made my relationship with my brother really grow. So that's probably one of my most treasured memories. Yeah, it's a good one. I do have Mark um, creating food in the background, so if you can hear something, that's what it is. Yeah. I'm pretty um, mine, like, I think would have to be probably getting engaged to Mitch because oh. it, like, started funny. everything. How did you do it? Um, <laughs> so we went to the Hunter Valley, um, and we'd been dating for a year. So we'd known each other for a while before we'd been friends and co-workers, like, because I think I've mentioned that we we met at work. Um, and, um, <laughs> Mark, it's romantic story time. <laughs> um, so we went to the Hunter Valley and, um, we went and we had gotten massages and we were walking back to our hotel room and like all of a sudden Mitch was like, <sighs> and I was like, what is wrong with you? And he's like, oh, um. Nothing. I just feel really relaxed. He'll, uh, he'll be in the car going, I don't sound like that. <laughs> um, and we got to the room and the door opened and there were like rose petals everywhere. Oh my and God. It like, it like, you know, like when something happens and it like doesn't click and it like takes a while for your brain to catch up with everything else. And so I'm kind of looking and then like, he like took me into the room and then he was on his knee and he proposed. Oh. Like, <laughs> I think That's I go. So beautiful. I after I said to him, "Did I say yes?" Because <laughs> you just get like caught up in the moment. Then um yeah, it was nice. So I think that that would have to be it. Then of course wow. like the birth of my children, like both my children. But that would be the main one because it you know starts everything. Yeah, it starts the journey. That's the you moment think. you're. you're- your book started. Yeah. Him. Because you that's when you choose who you're going to spend, hopefully, the rest of your life with. Yeah. Oh, I love that. <laughs> that's so romantic. <laughs> <laughs> okay. He, Let me move he on. has his Sorry. moments. Few, few and far between, but he has. <laughs> <laughs> okay. What? roles do you love and affection play in your life i'm not a very affectionate person okay at all um that you seem to be like super affectionate i'm very friendly um and i'm very like open and bubbly and stuff like that but like i have a hard time with affection i don't know why um i'm very affectionate with my kids yeah so like or all of my affection will probably go to my kids. Mitch will always tell me, like, his love language, for anyone that's read the five love languages, is, is um, aff- like, affection and, and touch and stuff like that. And sometimes I have a hard time doing that, but I try to be better. Um, but, I mean, love is the most important thing in a person's life, I think. I'd like to be better. I'd like to be more affectionate with other people, but slowly, slowly, one day, probably. Yeah. See, I I used to be like you. Um, so even with with Mark, like I, like I used to have a big problem talking about my feelings and about love and showing affection. And then one day it all just stopped. Like Mark just brought it all out in me, and now I I cry, I throw tantrums, I <laughs> oh I, I do all everything. that. <laughs> but like I'm almost too lovey dovey with Mark. Like, I, I think I get overbearing at times, but it's just because, like, I've just become so... No. <laughs> he's, like, staring at me, he's like, no. <laughs> like, that I just, scared I'm a the really heck out of me. person now. That scared what? the heck out of me, because <laughs> last I knew, he was in the living room watching TV, <laughs> and then I just yell, no. <laughs> That gets picked up on the podcast. It's hilarious. <laughs> um, moving on. 
When did you last cry in front of another person? When did you last cry by yourself? I had a panic attack the other day and I bawled my eyes out in front of Mark. Mm. So, yeah. Mitch and I had a huge fight over the weekend and I cried. I don't often cry, um, but yeah, I cried on the weekend. We had a fight, as all married couples do, as all couples do. Yeah, and every couple has It's all too fight. much and I just exploded. I feel, I think like a lot of us have a problem with like, like keeping things building up and building up until it boils <clears> over and it's like a fucking like pot of boiling water and you got the lid on it and it's like bubbling and bubbling and bubbling and bubbling and then suddenly it's just like the lid just like topples and then it's like the hot water goes over and it's like and it sizzles and it like yeah it's not good so yeah I think we both had teary moments um they are they're good you know I I never used to cry in the beginning of me and Mark I wouldn't speak about love I wouldn't tell him I loved him I wouldn't be affectionate and I definitely wouldn't cry and then something along the way just like completely flicked my switch and now I think I don't really have a good hold on my emotions because it's so new to me after all this time of keeping them away from people Mm. yeah but he makes me feel like it's okay like a lot of time we argue and it's not good but you know um he he sticks with me so (laughs) your house containing everything you own catches fire after saving your loved ones and pets you have time to safely make a final dash to save any one item. What would it be and why? I would literally drag my bookshelf to the balcony mm. and then toss it overboard and tell everyone to mind the fuck out. Because if I lose my books, I would be devastated. Mm. Yeah. I was thinking that because I was like, oh, but one item. I think probably my engagement ring. Oh, um, but isn't that normally on your finger? Well, no, I, it doesn't fit after two children because your fingers oh. swell. So I was going to wait until we finish having kids and then get it resized. Oh, okay. So, yes, I did, if, I did. and books, of course. Yes. They'd the make a good I've kindling, got. though. <laughs> the only other thing I've got is, like, probably, um, what do I have? I've got, like, books and booze merchandise, which would be nice to save. <laughs> oh, I've got my unwind candle. That's <laughs> lovely. That would definitely go off in place. I'd just throw that and be like, no, catch. Concentrate, <laughs> 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 that's a candle. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Hot <Hard> nerds. <laughs> okay. Well, that is it. So that's, um, yes. I think we're going to end it with, uh, well, boozy banter Book- times two. What bookie, books- bookie banter. Bookie banter. What books are you busy reading or have you just finished? So I um, went through my Goodreads and then I just kind of picked three that um, I wasn't reading for the podcast or other podcasts. Mm-hmm. Um, so I – have read Forces of Nature by Jane Harper, which is the second Aaron Falk book. What did you think? I rated it three goblets okay. of wine. It well, wasn't good. as good as The Dry. Um, mm-hmm. It wasn't bad. Like, that isn't to say that it was bad. I just didn't enjoy it as much. Um, I thought the story wasn't as good. I think the story could have been a lot better. I saw that you put it up on Instagram the other day. Did you start it? No, I haven't started it yet. That's actually a super old photo um, oh, okay. from like last summer. Um, <laughs> uh, I just decided I wanted to do it because it's like I took it in a place that had really good coffee and it was international coffee. Oh, there. that's so right. I was like, yeah, um, <laughs> I needed to shout the coffee <laughs> shop out. Um, and her new book is coming out, I believe, this month. Yes, and she's gonna man. be she's gonna be in Brisbane in uh, at the end of October, I believe. So I'm gonna be meeting her very soon. Cool. Um, just, 
The other two books that I have um, read, The Dark Between Stars, which is a book of poems by um, an Instagrammer, and his name is Atticus, and they are gorgeous. I love that little. name. Atticus, it is a nice name. They're just gorgeous, like, really short little poems, and they're really beautiful, and I really enjoyed it. And, then, like, you know, sometimes you read – the news and you look at the world and you think there is nothing nice. <laughs> Everything is horrible at the moment. But then you read something like that and you remember that there is good in the world. So it was nice. I think it was needed. And I was, so, you know, we read so much crime it, and thrillers. Is it like, like happy poetry? Yeah. Yeah. I've got some. Um, I can, I can the other books. Do that. Yeah. See, I never read poetry, but I walked into Dimex and I picked it up, and the first poem I read was just really, really sweet. And I was You're like, wearing books and boots. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm moving to go get the book so Jade can see me. Um, so I'm trying I'll not to move because I need to pee. And every time you move your internet connection, I don't think it's, it's good in the bedroom. Um, so they're just like little, you know, one or two sentence poems. Okay. Um, and so this one is actually really perfect for us. I love you most in that place between coffee and sleep. Uh, or, I like- um, I like this one too. I was thinking about getting this one as a tattoo actually. You are my fairy tale, my book to never finish. Let me linger in your story a little ever longer. Oh, that's gorgeous. Isn't that nice? So I have that one actually. Yeah. Book one. So yeah, I, that, that. I, I rated that five stars because I just thought they were just all really gorgeous little, little words. It kind of reminds me a little bit, but, but like more modern of like a Rupi Kaur. Um, oh yeah. He does really short little poems, but mm-hmm. also with illustrations and stuff. Um, and I I adore her work. So yeah. Milk and Honey is gorgeous. I haven't read her latest one yet. What's it called? Like Sunflower or something? I can't mm-hmm. remember. But um, yep. Oh, cool. books. <laughs> and then the last um book that I have been reading is a buddy read with two of our listeners. Mm. Um, and I was just going to shout them out. So that's um. Um, what Katie read next, so it's underscore what Katie read next underscore, and Jade, not you though, underscore one the two nine two, the other Jade. Um, and I'm reading um, with them The Nowhere Child by Christian White, and he's an Australian author, and it's um, a book about um, this photography teacher, and this man comes up to her, and he says, um, I believe you have some information about this little girl who went missing when she was two years old. And she's like, what are you talking about? And he's like, I believe it's you. Oy. And it kind of takes her on a whole journey. Um, so she's in Australia, but she, she was taken when she was two from America. And so okay. she's kind of figuring out why her mother, who's now passed away and who she, you know, was raised by and who she loves might have taken her away from her actual family. It's very good. Very good. Yeah. Good Australian novel. I have not read that yet, but I'm definitely going to. Today I finished, you you already know this about me. I love Colleen Hoover. (laughs) I I finished a Colleen (laughs) Hoover book called uh, Without Merit, which is one. That has been on my radar for so long, but I have been so hesitant to pick it up. So many people have told me that it's really, like, it's so different from her others. It's younger. It's not as dark. But, like, if you if you just Google the cover, it is so stunning. And, to ha- like, I had the hardback um, in South Africa, and it's just got the most stunning embossed cover. Um, Love so, so, like, I'm so glad that I didn't listen to people because even though like it took me a while my curiosity was still there and I picked it up yesterday and I've already finished it um it's like it's a family drama riddled with dysfunctional characters with a forbidden love um 
it's, it's kind of got that kind of feel. And I I loved the message that this book gave. It's basically like it allows us to see that everyone has something about them that makes them different, whether it be whether it be like mental health, anxiety, depression, allergies, bad eyesight, not being good enough at maths, whatever it is that you might think that you aren't good at. This book, like, tells you that that's okay. We're all different. And it's such a simple but powerful message. And it's done beautifully in this book. So, like, in this book, our main character, Merritt, she's got this twin sister and this really dysfunctional relationship with her family. Uh, She thinks that this dude is dating her sister, but he's not. And she falls in love with him, so she's, like, super torn between what she should do because she like is obsessed with him but she can't hurt her sister but there's a lot of other stuff in it like there's there's so many things like it's got like it's like an exploration into sexual identity and there's all sorts of stuff about um there's big trigger warnings into depression and suicide and anxiety and um all sorts of stuff and just like Colleen Hoover is good at. It's got the cringeworthy romance and <laughs> the weird names that she gives all of her characters, but I love Colleen Hoover and I always will, and I'm happy that I read it, and I'm going to shut up now. <laughs> so that's the only thing you've read lately? I've read a lot lately, but that is <clears throat> the only one that I can think about that I really want to discuss because the others are, like, predominantly yep. are... Podcast uh, buddy read picks, yeah, like pieces of her, which took me forever, unfortunately. And pen pal, I'm, I'm halfway through now. Yep. And so a so far, not, yeah, so far, pen pal, I haven't found spooky. I'm still in boxes. I think I'm just about to finish the second chapter of boxes, mm-hmm. but the cash. A simple favor. I know I enjoyed, and you weren't the biggest fan, but mm-hmm. they're all going to be more in depth in later episodes so yeah i'll leave i'll leave that as that and um i'm going to shut up because i feel like i'm rambling (laughs) but i'm good at rambling (laughs) (laughs) well this was a rambly episode so if you stuck with us and you enjoyed this episode and i hope that everyone learnt a little bit more about us i think we're pretty open and honest and we like to let you know what we're about, I guess. <laughs> we're flattered exactly. that people people do want to know about us. <laughs> yes, exactly. And I just love that people are actually downloading us. <laughs> like at the point where we are, we got one thousand downloads last month. I was That's very absolutely good. amazed. That's just like in September. So very thank you to everyone that made that possible. Yeah. Yes. Okay, so I think that wraps up this episode. Don't forget to um, show us some support by leaving us a review on Apple iTunes or Stitcher or wherever you listen to your podcasts. It helps other people hear about us and see us when they look for pod- podcasts. Uh, we're on Instagram under BooksBoothPod. Um, we're on Twitter under BooksBoothPod. And we've got personal Instagrams. Mine is boho underscore bookworm and Kiara's is uh, bookish.kiki. And what else, Kiara? We have email now. So hello at booksboozepod.com is our general email. And then we each have our personal one. So that'll just be our name at booksboozepod.com. So Kiara or Jade. And I am jealous because Kiara's got such a beautiful name. Jade's a nice name, too. (laughs) Thank you. Awesome. Yeah, I think that's all. Let us know if you would want, what type of merch you would want. Yes. If you want merchandise. Shirts, but they haven't had much, like, feedback lately. Mm -hmm. So, like, I don't know, tote bags or, I don't know. Give us an idea, and if we like your idea, then you will get a free one. That sounds awesome. (laughs) Okay, well, I'll see you next time, guys. Bye. Bye.
Bye. Thanks for listening to Books and Booze. You can find us on Instagram and Twitter under Books Booze Pod or email us at hello at booksboozepod.com. We're also on Patreon if you'd like to support our podcast by donating as little as $2 a month. If you're looking for a free way to support us, then you can leave us a review on Apple iTunes or Stitcher. It really helps other people find us. As always, it's been a pleasure. I'm Jade and you can follow my Instagram at boho underscore bookworm and Kiara is my co-host and you can find her under bookish.kiki. Until next time, happy reading and drink responsibly.